Um, the the actual graphing isn't hard. It's getting the window. That's that's difficult. Okay, and a couple of things you should notice right away is this constant. This constant's at 104, which means that your graph crosses all the way up there at 104. 104. Okay, so that's going to be something important. So I'm going to switch over to the uh, virtual TI calculator here. It's an 83. It's really similar to yours if you've got an 84 most of the ways, but um, you go, you start by going to the y equals and just entering this uh, as you see. So 7x, I have to use the uh, caret button. You may have an exponent button, not sure. 21x squared minus 91x plus 104. Now, most students will just graph it to start. And if you, uh, if you have hit graph, you should see something like this on your screen. Might take a little longer to load. But this is not this is not a good picture. This is an incomplete picture. Uh, so the first place you want to go is to zoom. Now, one thing that sometimes work is to go up to zoom fit. That's zero, or go down to zero. One, two, three, four. It's really odd. It goes it goes from one seven to seven eight nine, and it goes down to zero instead of ten. Don't know why. But hit enter. Okay. And what zoom fit does is it tries to fit the window that it thinks you need. And you can see that that's kind of better, but it's still not great. Yes. Okay, so, so what I notice is that the kind of left and right, like the left bound and the right bound are okay, but we need, we need to kind of zoom in around this origin here. Okay, so, so you're gonna do that by going to window. So the x min, x max, if I go back to the graph, the x min is minus 10, the x max is 10. Go back to window here. They, they're going all the way down to minus 8,000 and 86. Y max, 4,094. So I mentioned the, the y intercept was at 104. So I'm gonna change this substantially. I'm gonna go minus 1,000 to 1,000. Really zoom in on that part. I, this is just a guess. This is a complete guess. Okay. If I'm wrong, we'll change it. And then I'm going to graph. Okay. So now it's got a little better shape. Okay. To it. We could probably squeeze in a little bit more on the top and bottom. We could probably go like 500 or minus 500 to 500 to give a little better fit. This thick line right here, it has to do with scaling along the y axis. So we're going to fix that now as well. Let me change again, like just one thing at a time. So minus 500 to 500, okay? And then your Y scale, that's what's causing the, the, thick, the thickness because it's putting a one 500 times then 500 times in each direction. Let's change that to like 100 and then graph it again. Let, let me know if you're caught up here. I don't wanna go too fast if you're still manipulating your, your calculator. I'm caught up. So now it kind of looks better. Would you agree? Yeah. Now, the, the, the reason we did all this is if your teacher gave you a problem that said to determine the window to show all characteristics of, of this, okay? So what I'm gonna do is snip that in to the other screen. It doesn't really apply to your homework problems, but that's okay. This is, a, this is an important skill to have uh, in most courses. Let me go back to the other screen here. So what your so all that work and what your teacher wants to see now is that like this is minus 10, this is 10, minus 500, 500, and then they want to know your increments. Like each of yours is 10, and then the other one is 100 on the y, and that's that's sufficient. That's kind of what they're looking for. Now when you're matching, you, you they on the other page they give you the probably the, the leftmost and the rightmost value in the top and the bottom, or they give you a window that you can kind of compare to, I'm guessing. 
and then you could just use that window for each one. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, we'll uh, we'll try ten next. Do the same thing. Okay. All right, so we're going to go back to the y equals and change uh, change add add this one in. So I'm going to go share that screen. Um, so one of the things you could do is like you could just turn off the graph, kind of like Desmos. But what most instances they just clear it out because you don't want to graph multiple things. But you really could, you really could like turn it off. Um, but you don't have to. You can you can just clear it out um it's probably the best thing to do there so let's just enter this in minus 9 x cubed plus 27 x squared plus 54 x minus 73. i always double check uh make sure i entered it right if you get an error it's usually subtraction ne negative thing issue there and just go to graph sometimes it works out nice like this one's this is the same window it looks really nice it looks really clean okay but if you if you go to like zoom and you do a zoom fit again you won't get a nice window most likely I'm not sure what it'll do actually yeah obviously this is not this is not as good as what we just saw so, um, you know, sometimes you get lucky. You just, you've, you've got the right, right window there. Um, if you're ever unsure, you can always go back to Zoom standard. That's your, that's your basic window for this. And, and this is awful. This doesn't tell you anything. That's when you'd have to go and manipulate your window uh, like we just did. Like from the last one we knew it was minus 500 to 500. And then we changed our scale to 100. And but you know your graph's so nice, you know why would you make any changes to it? I, th I think this is sufficient for that. Are these matching up with what you see on the other page? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so let's just graph 11. Um, do you you're able to see 11? You've got that on a book or on your on your computer? email, whatever. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if I needed to show it again. All right. So here we go. Let's graph. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay. Let's graph 11. Lots more stuff here. Minus X to the fifth. No, I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's wrong. Completely wrong. X to the fifth minus eight X to the fourth plus nine X cubed plus 58 X squared. Oh, thank you for the referral. You referred um, S Susan Pewter, maybe her son, yeah. uh, Lewis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, oh, yeah, no problem. Really, I really appreciate that. Um, So, uh, do you like Starbucks? I do. Okay, you'll be seeing a gift card from me for that. So that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, let's see here. X to the fifth minus eight x to the fourth plus nine x cubed, fifty eight squared minus one sixty four x plus sixty nine. The reason I'm checking it is most of the errors are made when you put it into the calculator. Right. So we're going to graph. I'm going to the same window. Wow, we got we're getting lucky again. <laughs> Usually, you don't get this lucky with the window working out over and over again. Um, yeah, it's this is a good window. It shows you all the behavior that you care about, um, which is kind of amazing. Right. So I'll snip that into the other other window.
All right, one more, and then we'll move on to some other calculator stuff. Okay. Um, so again, go to your y equals, clear it out, start over. Were you using the calculator much in class? We were. Okay. Do you did you get a sense that the teacher really like this is important to them that the that the graphing is going to be something you're going to be doing a lot of? Um, I think so. Five x minus forty four. Okay. Just double check, minus x to the fifth, three x to the fourth, 16 x cubed, two x squared minus 95 x minus 44. So this one's pretty good again. I mean, it gives you all the behavior you're looking for. I'm gonna grab a snip of this. Okay, so uh, any questions on the graphing? Um, um, no. Okay, there is more you will be doing. You will be finding these, these maximums on the graph, maximums, the mins. You might find where it crosses the x-axis, the y-axis. You might be doing all of that. That's, you know, I assume that's coming up here. You mentioned linear and quadratic regression. Do you have any questions that you want us to work on or do you want me to find some? Oh, I have I have word problems I can send over. Yes, please do. We'll take a look at those. Okay, I just sent it. All right. Okay, th this is different than what I was expecting. It's it's um, it, which is okay. I, it's it's not calculator though. Um, I mean, I guess it could be, but um, the the uh, instructions say to determine whether it's it's uh, linear or quadratic. So let me go share um, new that that uh, workspace we're in here, and we'll look at the first one. Okay, computer technician charges $75 for a consultation plus 35 per hour. Okay, so I, I would actually start by baking a table and let's look at hours and cost. Okay, uh, so what, what does it cost for one hour in this scenario? Um, $35. 35, but you have to pay this this initial charge. So it's right. actually it's actually the the sum of those two, which is 110. Now for two hours, do you have to pay the $75 again? No. No. So this time it's just it's just adding one uh, adding 35 to the previous number, 145. Three hours is 180 and so on. The cost for zero hours, which you would never pay for zero hours, but we can we can label it here, is seventy five dollars. So this is one of those problems that's that's got a fixed plus a variable cost. Now you you have a gym membership, is that right? Yeah. 
do you remember, did you have to pay anything to start? I did. Yeah. So a lot of them, you know, I don't know what they are now. Um, doesn't really matter, but I think I saw at LA fitness the other day, it was like 25 plus 35 a month. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'd have no idea, but the, the fixed is the one time. Okay. The, to decide whether it's linear, you look at the output. The output is the cost and decide, is it going up by the same amount each time? That's a question for you. Is it going up by the same amount each time? Um, after the, after the fixed cost, yes. Yes. So this one, this one is in fact uh, linear. All right, now we've got to write a function. So the only functions you know for linear that are reasonable here is mx plus b. Right. From this table, can you tell me either of those values, m or b? Maybe one stands out, I'm not sure. Um, wouldn't the slope be 34? Five. Yes, because that's what it's going up by each time. Yeah, and then B would be 75. Yes, so in terms of, of like fixed, fixed is the B and the variable is M. Any questions on that? No. Okay. The next ones are, well, okay, I guess we need to, we um, label what variables represent. Okay, so in this case, we need to say X is, X is the number of hours. And we kind of had that in the table here. This is X. This is the output is F of X, but X is the number of hours. Any questions on that? No. Okay. Do you want another example of this one to try on your own? Sure. Okay. A storage unit has a move in special where the first month is 50% off the monthly rental rate. If a 10 by 10 unit costs $110 per month, um, what is the function for the cost per month? So I would again recommend a table, okay? Is the scenario clear? Yeah. Okay. Um, so sometimes you don't start at zero, you go out like, well, what is it what is it going to cost me the first month? Um, it's going to cost you $110. But what do you also have to pay? Oh. Off 50% off monthly rent. Yeah, so it's 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 really this is kind of odd, but it's like month 0 is really your first month. But month zero is 55. Okay, so then the second month is the 110. Um, and then the second, and then and then it goes up from there. Um, so you, so here's what you've paid. I mean, so we're looking at this, sorry, just to be clear. It's 165, that you're looking at the total paid. 
Um, so this is not a good example. Okay, total cost for M months. So M months, and this is the cost of M months. So this, so after the second month, it's another 110. Okay. Mm. And after the third month, it's 385. Rental um, storage units get very expensive very quickly. Okay, so is this linear or something else? Um, it's linear. It's linear, yeah. Okay, good. Let's go to number two. I didn't realize number two actually was linear. Your instructor, I didn't check the look at this very closely. Um, so believe it or not, there are towns where the population decreases each year. So the population of Pine Bluff is 6,791 and is decreasing at the rate of seven people per year. All right, so if you need to, you can write a table where you have year and people. So they're starting out with 6,791. 6, In year one, one year later, how many people are left? Oh, 6,790. I'm sorry, so I wrote the wrong number here. It's 6,791, oh. and it goes bound by oh. 7,784. Yeah. Okay. Year two, 6,777. Year three, 6,770. Is this linear? Yes. Yes. It's going down by seven each time, down by seven. Now you have to decide like what you're gonna use for a function. So a lot of times for people, we use P, P of, and you have to decide on a variable. What variable do you like for, for uh, years, I guess? Um, T. Okay. So it's MT plus B, you know, MX plus B. Um, what is it going down by each year? Seven. Seven. So minus seven. And then what is the initial? Oh, population? six thousand seven hundred ninety-one. Good. So you'd want to say t years or after t years. That's that's labeling your variable. Right. This is this is not as complicated as the stuff we were doing, you know, a week ago. Is is uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope the teacher made yeah. You know, I mean, it gets a little more difficult now with number three, but um, maybe they just warmed up to the the harder problems here. Okay, let's look at this one here. Um, the area of a rectangular lawn is 1,200 square feet. So go, it's always good to draw a picture. The area here is, uh, is 1,200. If the length of the lawn is 27 feet less than three times its width, what is the length and width of the lawn? So you have to decide is this what's this bottom one is it the length or is it the width um and the answer oh, is it does it really does it doesn't matter yeah you can you can either do either one it doesn't really matter what's more important and i want you to read this 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 a little bit more we may read that read this one more time. Is the length in terms of the width or is the width in terms of the length? Basically, is it an L equals or is it a W equals? Um, length times width. Well, that is the area. Length times oh, width yeah. is the area. But what I'm asking you is when you read this sentence, 
is it saying the length is in terms of the width or the width is in terms of the length? It's the length is in terms of the width or the width is, oh my God. <laughs> oh, the width is in terms of the length. Okay, okay so, length. so so here's, yeah. here's another way to, here's another way to think of it. If I tell you the length is 10, can you give me the width? Or if I tell you the width is 10, can you give me the length? Yeah. Yes, but which one? <laughs> which oh, one? What? <laughs> um, if the width is 10, I can give you the length. But if the length is 10, I can give you the width. So here, here's what I heard. If, if, if the oh. width is 10, yeah, that's right. That's right. If the width is 10, you can give me the length, right? Yeah. So the length is in terms of the width. Okay. So so let's let's convert that into um, the length of the lawn is L is L equals length of the lawn L is equals 27 less than three times its width. So the awkwardness of the English language is that you multiply and then you subtract, but the but the way you write it is you show the subtraction first and then the multiplication second. Is that is that consistent yeah. with your understanding? Okay. All right. Now, um, here's what we're doing. We know, and you just told me this, you said that area is length times width, but that's two variables, three if you include the area. But we know the area, the area is 1200. So now we're down to two variables. So we have three variables, two variables. What we would really like is to have one of the variables in terms of the other. And now we have it, we have that the length is in terms of the width. So you can substitute in for length. Does this sound familiar to you? Yeah. Okay. All right, so now the, this, usually you would just solve this, like the you would get you would get some numbers and be done. But oh, I guess you do. Um, so one and two are just to write a write a function. This one you're just going to solve. Okay. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to first recognize this is this is why probably you were doing the calculator stuff. Is is that the the one on the right is a quadratic. 3w squared minus 27w. That's a quadratic. So if we were to graph it, it would look something like this. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Quadratics open up or down. What does the graph of a, of a number look like? Oh, 1,200. Is it a horizontal or vertical line? Um, horizontal. Yes. So there's some place where these intersect. All right, and let's use the calculator to do this. I think that's probably the intent here. Um, so a couple of things. The calculator does not work with W, okay? It only works with X. Um, I know you see other symbols on the calculator. That's for polar, parametric, and I think one other mode. Um, so you have to change this one on the right side to y equals 3x squared minus 27x. And that's going to be your y1. Your y2 will be the other number, or other thing, 1,200 in this case. Is that is that clear? Yeah. OK, so let's go back to the calculator. 
and go back to y equals. And I'm going to put in 3x squared minus 27x. <clears throat> and then y2 equals 1,200. All right, so now let's let's for the moment, because you guys say I think the windows, well actually the window won't work. So let's let's graph it. <clears throat> and there's the quadratic kind of. And that's it. So this doesn't tell you anything, this picture. This is awful. Okay. Um, so what what can you do? Well, you can always do a zoom fit, zoom zero. That's a good one. It doesn't always work, but it's a good place to start. So notice there's the there's the horizontal line, but we have no idea where they intersect. So this is where you got to go to your window. So we know that we need to go more out to the right, but not up much more. So we're gonna, so our x max needs to get bigger. So let's just change the x max. Let's change the x max to, uh, and here's here's some ideas. You either multiply by 10, which means going to 100, or you multiply by 2, which doubles. Let's go to 100 first, just to see. They're not going to change anything else. And wouldn't you know it, they intersect. But this is not a great picture here. We're too far out to the right. We really need some more room up here at the top. So we're going to change our Y max to maybe 1,500 and at least cut the, the X max in, in half, you know, somewhere around 50, but I, I think we can go a little, I think we can go a little tighter, like maybe 35 or something like that. Just, and, and you just try, I mean, you can guess wrong here. And there's no penalty for that. So Y max, I said like, let's go 1500, X max, let's go like 35. And there we have, now we have a nice, easy, clear intersection between the two. Do you remember from class how to find the intersection on the graph? Um, yeah, don't you, don't you like move it up to the point where they intersect on the calculator? So, yeah, so a lot of students use trace and, and trace is yeah. like, I don't know, it's like, it's like a cannonball in the pool when you want to dive, like, like sort of works. I don't know Is that like, I mean, it depends how accurate you want to be. It's kind of, it's maybe that right there, but it's not exact. Right. And, and so like this works to like get you in the ballpark, but it's not good to get the most accurate one. So to do it perfectly, you hit second, and then calc, which is the trace button. But when you hit second, it's the yellow. And we want intersect. We want to know where they intersect, where they hit each other. So the calculator tries to help you. Um, this was programmed, you know, probably 30 years ago. I mean, I used a TID3 in high school and it's not great. It's not like modern stuff we expect today, but it was kind of neat back then. First curve literally means like, just pick a curve be near the intersection point. So the, what the, the where I'm at is near it. If I go left, this is actually still near it. At some point, it's not near it though. Like at some point, you can see it start goes going up the other way. Let's see if I can get get to where we see it. That's not near it. So near it means like on the same street. It doesn't mean like right in front of their front house. You know, you gotta be. You got You just have to get close. All right. So you hit enter. Second curve, you, are you near it? Yes, you don't, don't, you don't need to get right on top of it. It's not, not good, doesn't help, just get close. Hit enter and you always guess wherever you are. There's no reason to, and there you go, there's your intersection. So X is 25, Y is 1200. Did you get that on your screen as well? Yeah. Okay, so now let me go back to the other window it's like, what does that all mean? Well, X is really W. So the width, the width is 25. This problem asked for both the 
width and the length. So we've got the width. To find the length, you can use the equation. See how we have that the length is three times the width minus 27? You can use that to find the length. Or you can go back to this equation and find the width. So will you calculate the uh, length for us? I'm sorry, the length, not the width. Will you calculate the length for us either using this equation or this equation? You know that the W is 25 here. Right. Wait, so the width of, width, oh my gosh. The width is 25? Yes. Okay. What is the length? Oh, the length is 1,200. No, the area is 1,200. Oh. <laughs> to, find, to find the width, again, you, you have to use either this equation, 3w minus 27, or this equation. Either one will work. I would use this one on the right, but you're welcome okay. to use either. Forty-eight. Okay. Length is forty-eight. We should give some units to it. Feet and feet. And there you have it. So the, the overarching idea here is that if you can write the equations, you can let the calculator do the hard part, which is to solve it. finding the intersection. All right, so new question here. The width of a photo is five inches less than its length. So I, I you know, I'm not gonna, I won't, I'll help here because we are getting short on time. Make sure we get through at least this and some more, but um, it, you really wanna ask yourself is which is in terms of which, meaning like, if I give you the length, can you tell me the width? If I give you the width, can you tell me the length? Or you look at the language. The is is always the equal sign. So the width is W equals five inches less than, than the length. So there's, so there's a photo here of someone or something. And the width, uh, the, if you know the length, the width is L minus five. Mm -hmm. Now, they add a border around the photo. And it's two inches. Now it's two inches in all directions. So it, it's actually plus two, plus two. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 like the outer one here is L plus two, plus two, L plus four. And then similarly, the other direction is plus two, plus two. So it's it's the L minus five plus two plus two. So it's L minus one. The area covered by the photo and its border is 104 square inches. So they're saying like the, the, the full area, the, the one in red here that's 104 square inches. You, so you don't even care about the interior stuff now. You just care about the overall area of this and you you multiply these two together. So it's, it's area equals L plus four times L minus one, but you know the area, the area is 104, right? So just like in the last problem, you're going to set uh, each of these into uh, the Y position. So this, this first one's on the right here is going to be Y1. The order doesn't matter. You can make the other one Y1. Uh, but your calculator cannot use L. So uh, you're going to use X, 
But here's the nice thing. You do not have to multiply. You just let the calculator do it. The calculator will handle all of that. Y4. So this one, again, it's going to be some sort of a, of a quadratic intersection. We're going to go look at that now. So go back to your calculator. Go back to your y equals clear, clear, uh, and then go um, go ahead and enter these in. Like I said, don't no need to foil. You might make mistakes foiling. I might make mistakes. Just let the calculator do it. X minus one, parentheses, and then 104. So should we graph it or should we change the window? What do you think? Um change the window. Okay. So if you if you're not sure, you can do a zoom fit. Um, I know for sure we're way too, uh, we, we're, we're, our Y max is way too big. Like I know for sure, because um, it's 104, I mean, 200 sounds reasonable. Um, so give that, we just try that and see, see what we get here. Boom, we got it. Now you could, you could make this a little better. You could, you know, squeeze in the X max over here. I think it was at 35 and you could change it to like 20. Um, the Y max is too tall, but this is good enough. Okay. okay. So again, I'd like you, I'd like you this time to do the second calc intersect for us, please. And, uh, you're noticing that it's taken me a while to get to where I'm near the curve. You can go above it. You can go below it. It doesn't really matter. Just get in the in the neighborhood. So it would be like seven. You, you've got to, you've got to hit like, you've got to go through the progressions here. First curve, you hit enter. Then it's going to ask you for the second curve. It'll it'll put you on the other line. You know, you get close. Then you hit enter, enter again, and it'll give you the answer. Uh, it says error. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, let me let me show you on here because we're basically out of time. Uh, enter, enter, and then uh, you see it perfectly intersects at nine one hundred four for that. Yeah. All right. So we'll uh, we'll do some more calculator stuff. It's not it's not it, it's not rocket science. You know, it's not it's not even as hard as swimming. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, uh, it you're more than capable of doing this. So. Um, what your error, your error must be, is it from the graphing of it or is it from the actual second calc? I think it's from the second. Okay. So when, when, when you're, if you're not on this, if you're not, if you don't choose two different curves, you will get this error. So just make sure you can see both points okay. that you've selected. All right. But that'll do it for us for today. Um, 